Good evening, God's Prayer Warriors. Brother Felix here. And tonight we're going to continue reading from the book of 1 Samuel. We'll be reading chapter 29, verses 1 through verse 11. Again, we're going to continue reading from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 29, verses 1 through verse 11. In the name of God, the Father, Jesus Christ, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit, I give you thanks for today. I give you thanks for my life. I give you thanks for my beautiful wife, Teresa. And I give you thanks for my beautiful children, Emmanuel, Mariana, Carlos Felix, and Luis Enrique. I give you thanks for loving and forgiving us, Lord. I give you thanks for all your prayer warriors. And I give you thanks for all my brothers and sisters that will watch this video. Lord Jesus, I ask what I always ask in your name. May there be at least one verse for each one of our ears in tonight's reading. That would be two verses per head. And when we hear these verses spoken, may the Holy Spirit be stirred up inside of us. And may we have the courage to apply these verses to our lives. I ask this in the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, brothers and sisters, let's get right into it. 1 Samuel, chapter 29. Akish sends David back to Ziklag. The Philistines gathered all their forces at Aphek. And Israel camped by the spring in Jezreel. As the Philistine rulers marched with their units of hundreds and thousands. David and his men were marching at the rear with Akish. The commanders of the Philistines asked, What about these Hebrews? Akish replied, Is this not David, who was an officer of Saul, king of of Israel, he has already been with me for over a year, and from the day he left Saul until now, I have found no fault in him. But the Philistine commanders were angry with him and said, Send the man back, that he may return to the place you assigned him. He must not go with us into battle or he will turn against us during the fighting. How better could he regain his master's favor than by taking the heads of our own men? Isn't this the David they sang about in their dances? Saul has slain his thousands, and David his tens of thousands. So Akish called David and said to him, As surely as the Lord lives, you have been reliable, and I would be pleased to have you serve with me in the army. From the day you came to me until now, I have found no fault in you, but the rulers don't approve of you. Turn back and go in peace. Do nothing to displease the Philistine rulers. But what have I done? asked David. What have you found against your servant from the day I came to you until now? Why can't I go and fight against the enemies of my lord the king? Akish answered, I know that you have been as pleasing in my eyes as an angel of God. Nevertheless, the Philistine commanders have said, He must not go up with us into battle. Now get up early along with your master's servants who have come with you and leave in the morning as soon as it is light. So David and his men got up early in the morning to go back to the land of the Philistines. And the Philistines went up to Jezreel. These are the words of our Lord our God, brothers and sisters. Let's uh, 
verse 4 reads the following. But the Philistine commanders were angry with him and said, Send the man back that he may return to the place you assigned him. He must not go with us into battle or he will turn against us during the fighting. How better could he regain his master's favor than by taking the heads of our own men? The other Philistine commanders knew that David was the one as a young man had killed their champion, Goliath. We read about that in chapter 17, verses 32 through verse 54. He had killed hundreds of Philistine soldiers. We read about that in chapter 18, verse 27. And was the hero of Israelite victory songs, which we read about in chapter 21, verse 11. They were afraid that in the heat of battle, David might turn against them. Although David was upset at this at first, God used the commander's suspicion, suspicion to keep him from having to fight against Saul and his countrymen. Although David was upset at first, God used the commander's suspicions to keep him from having to fight against Saul and his country. So see, brothers and sisters, even when we're trying to sometimes in some situations do something that we think we should be doing, God will protect us as he did here. As he protected David, David wanted to go with Akish to go fight against Saul and his men. But God intervened. Glory be to God, brothers and sisters. This chapter I have not read before. So it is the first time that I've read chapter 29. So for those of you out there like me, I hope you guys learned something from it. For those of you out there who have read chapter 29, I hope it was a, a great reminder. Let's end in prayer, brothers and sisters. In the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit, I just want to give you thanks for today. I want to give you thanks for tonight's reading. I want to give you thanks for reminding us that we always want to trust in you. And thank you for reminding us that you are always working for the, for the best for us. And sometimes when we try to do things and something stops us from doing it right away we want to we want to blame uh, uh, someone that that's stopping us from doing it but I think we need to pause and and reflect and and put our trust in you and know that very well you may be just looking out for us looking out for our best interests thank you God I ask you, Lord Jesus, that you forgive me and everyone watching of our sins. I ask that you give us all a discerning heart, that you fill us with your Holy Spirit and remove any evil inside of us and destroy the evil. I ask that you keep us healthy, happy, and safe, that you continue to lead us, teach us, guide us, and protect us. In the name of Jesus, I ask that you heal us of any sicknesses, diseases, viruses, cancers, diabetes, any chest pains, chest conditions, any arthritis, any degenerative back disc disease, any pain in our knees, any pain in our bones, any pain in our back, any depression, any suicidal thoughts. 
I ask that you heal us of anything that's causing us pain or making us sick, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual. I ask for healing in Jesus' name. I ask in the name of Jesus that you break all chains of addiction, whether the addiction is in us or someone that we love. I ask that you break chains of addiction of drinking, of smoking, of drugging, of, of lusting, of money, of power, of greed. In the name of Jesus, I ask that you break chains of sin. If there's any sin that we enjoy doing and if we choose to do it, I ask that the Holy Spirit convicts us heavy in our heart and makes us feel sick in our stomach until we repent and turn away from these sins. I give you thanks for my wife and children. I ask that you bless, heal, and protect them. I ask that you bless, heal, and protect my daughter, Ariana. I ask that you bless, heal, and protect my mother and my grandmother, my sisters Liz and Yvette, Sophia Borge, Chris Lewis, my uncle Oscar, Bernardo Chavez, Delia, Mrs. Betty Payne, Brother Anthony and, and his family, that you lead Brother Anthony's younger brother back to you, Lord, and that you help Brother Anthony with his son. I ask that you bless him and protect Prayer Warrior Brother Ryan's mother and Prayer Warrior Brother Ryan's wife. I ask that you bless him and protect all your prayer warriors and their loved ones. Prayer Warrior Sister Teresa's brother Roman. That you keep him safe, Lord. I ask that you keep all of our loved ones who are incarcerated safe, Lord. And that you lead them all back to you. I ask that you restore broken hearts and broken relationships. That you reunite mothers and fathers with their children. That you do not let any court system separate loving parents from their children. I ask that you help us that are unemployed. That you help us find a correct job. I ask that if any of us is suffering from any suicidal or depression, I ask that you remove those thoughts from our head and 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 that the Holy Spirit fills us and, and, and replaces it with strength and peace and love and comfort. I ask for those of us that's mourning the loss of a loved one that you comfort us with your Holy Spirit, Lord. I ask if any of us is going through any legal issues, if we are reading and applying your holy scriptures to our lives every day and if we have the courage to lay down our legal issues that you feed king jesus I ask that you be our defender our protector our advocate our attorney and may your will be done i ask that for those that are homeless lord tonight and that are hungry that you send them with children one of your children, one of the children of God, that you lead them to them, that they help them by giving them a warm meal and pointing them, pointing them towards a place where they can have a shelter over their head tonight. I ask that you continue to, to bless, heal, and protect all of your children that are out here doing your work, Lord. That you remove our thoughts and our words out of our mind and replace it with your thoughts and your words. When we speak, may the world hear the Holy Spirit speaking through us. I ask that you bless you and protect everyone at the Kingdom Music Family Ministry. Everyone at St. Paul's Lutheran and Hope Lutheran Church in Aurora. And everyone at the House of Rest Church in Modesto, California. I especially ask that you bless you and protect Pastors Brian Trejo, Angel Morales, and David and Angel Rocha, and their wives and children. I love you. I thank you. I need you. And all the glory belongs to you, Abba, Almighty Father, King Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. I love you, brothers and sisters. I hope you guys are having a great night. And we will continue reading together. Good night, guys.